So let's think about the breast ductile system. So the breast milk is going to be made in a series of lobules. And these lobules have a large surface area because they are surrounded by alveoli. So there's one lobule there with the alveoli. Here's another lobule with the alveoli. And these join to form mammary ducts. And there's other lobules with their alveoli also producing milk going into these mammary ducts. Then as we get near the nipple, there's a much wider area. The ductile system widens out into a sinus, a lactiferaceous sinus. Then this carries on via a lactiferaceous duct and that drains into the nipple. So let's just clarify this a little bit. <clears throat> This is a lobule here. This is a lobule. So these are the lobules and these are the alveoli. The alveoli producing the milk. The milk's draining into the lobules and then into these secondary tubules. And then into these larger mammary ducts. and then into this lactiferaceous sinus. Lactiferaceous sinus. Lact, of course, means to do with milk. And then on into the lactiferaceous duct. And it's the lactiferaceous duct that drains into the nipple. And this is what is basically forming a lobe of the breast. So there's going to be suspensory ligaments here holding this in place, the suspensory ligaments. So we see that this lobe of the breast is composed of these lobules and the alveoli. Now the Milk producing units, of course, are glandular. Some people say they're modified sweat glands or sebaceous glands. But the point is they are producing the milk. Passing down, the milk's going to be uh, stored in the lactiferaceous sinus before going out into the nipple. And so there's going to be numerous lactiferaceous sinuses draining into the, uh, the nipple. Now, what's actually happening here? If we think about this in more detail, let's think about, um, let's imagine that this is the one of the alveoli. So we have the, we have the milk producing cells here. The glandular milk producing cells with their own nucleus. So these are actually producing the, the milk. And once produced, if we relate that to this diagram, the milk has to go from the lobule, or from the alveoli into the lobule, into these uh, secondary tubules to go down into the lactiferaceous sinus. So what we actually have here is we have these milk producing cells, the glandular cells, but surrounding those, we have another type of cell. So this epithelium is, is two layers thick. There's another type of cell. So these are the epithelial cells here.
actually producing the milk. But another type of cell around about the outside of these, these are called uh, myoepithelial cells. And these myoepithelial cells are contractile. They will contract. And it's the same situation in these secondary tubules. So if we imagine a secondary tubule, that's the lumen of the secondary tubule there. Then we have a layer of luminal epithelial cells here lining the lumen of the duct, numerous luminal epithelial cells. And then again, round about the outside of these, we have the myoepithelial cells. Now, when the infant suckles, sensory impulses, particularly from the nipples, or from the nipple, will travel to the spinal nerves up to the hypothalamus. So sensory impulses from here go up to the hypothalamus. Now you might remember that in the hypothalamus it's connected to the pituitary gland via a stalk. This would be the posterior pituitary gland the posterior lobe of the pituitary gland, the neurohypophysis. Here we would have the uh, anterior lobe of the pituitary gland as well. So nerve impulses from the nipple go to the hypothalamus. And what we have in the hypothalamus are the uh, neurosecretory neurons. So the posterior hypothalamus is the, is the neurohypophysis, it's neurological tissue. So cells in there will go down into the posterior lobe of the pituitary gland. And because these cells are, are, are neuronal, they work by nerve impulses, they'll be firing of nerve impulses. But the key thing about these cells is they release the hormone. And the hormone, of course, is oxytocin. And the oxytocin circulates in the blood and it's the oxytocin that stimulates the contraction of the myoepithelial cells. So what that means is that the milk is going to be produced in the alveoli and the lobules, but they are going to contract and the secondary tubules are going to contract, putting the milk into the mammary ducts and the lactiferaceous sinus at a reasonably high pressure, 10 to 20 millimeters of mercury. But the system is only pressurised when the baby suckles on the nipple because it's the suckling that sends the impulses to the hypothalamus. So when the baby suckles, the impulses go to the hypothalamus, the oxytocin is released and that pressurises the system by the oxytocin stimulating the contraction of the myoepithelial cells. So all of these um, lactiferaceous ducts milk will be coming from the various lobes of the breast onto the nipple. So when the infant suckles, the, the system is already pressurised and it's not hard work for the infant to suckle because of the process of the oxytocin stimulating the letdown of milk. And as well as that, oxytocin has numerous other effects. It's involved in love and bonding between the mother and the infant, for example. So that's just a quick review of the anatomy involved, the alveoli, the lobule, the mammary ducts, the lactiferaceous sinus, the lactiferaceous duct and the nipple. So we see that the breast is made up of 15 to 20 lobes. The lobes are made up of lobules and the lobules are made up of the alveoli. But with the two layers of epithelium, the secretory epithelium and the contractile epithelium, this whole system is pressurised to 
facilitate this process of uh, breastfeeding and lactation. And of course, as healthcare professionals, we must always encourage breastfeeding for many, many positive reasons for the mother and the infant. Thank you.